delighted today to be joined by Dr. Charles Powell. He is director at leading Spanish think tank, the Alcano Royal Institute. Dr. Powell, you're very, very welcome to Dublin today. Thank you so much. It's a great pleasure and an honour to be here. Fantastic. Well, we look forward to hearing your views on the future of Europe. I might start uh, by looking at the global role of Europe. You're mm -hmm. coming today to talk about the opportunities and challenges that Europe faces as a global actor. What steps do you think the Union needs to take to be a more effective player on the global scale? Well, as you may recall, uh, the, the future um, High Representative and Vice President, uh, Giuseppe Borrell, in his hearings made, I think, an interesting point when he said that basically um, we have to think more strategically. We've all heard that this is going to be a geopolitical commission. But I think his main point, is, which is interesting, is that we have to sort of join the dots. In other words, um, we have to take fuller advantage of the things that the EU does best, for example, commercial policy, trade policy, and link that to other strategic goals. Um, and I think this is something that hasn't been fully achieved. We often forget what an enormous um, normative power the EU still has um, because of its 500 million in, um, inhabitants who are, provide, you know, make up the largest trade bloc in the world. And so in this current crisis in which the liberal international order is obviously under a lot of stress, um, basically I think working with like-minded democracies all over the world should be our top priority. And you mentioned their policy linkage. How much will this ability to project influence globally depend on the EU's ability to solve crises at home? I might mention inequality, migration. Well, it, it's, it's, uh, it's not very original, but I think it's true when people say that globalisation begin, begins at home. In other words, unless we make our societies um, function better, unless we uh, convince our own citizens that the EU is a worthwhile project at home, we will never be a credible global actor. I like quoting Danny Roderick, the famous Harvard professor, economist, who argues that basically we have to make three things compatible, economic globalisation, political democracy, and national sovereignty. And it's probably only the EU that can help us do that. And if we manage to do that within our individual member states, then perhaps we will be able to make the EU a more serious and credible global actor. And looking then specifically at Jose Borrell, who you mentioned, obviously he's Spanish foreign minister, what particular skill set do you think he will bring to the role of high representative? Well, I'm probably a bit biased because I've known him for 25 years and I've worked with him quite closely. But I think two things. First of all, uh, he knows the European Parliament extremely well. Of course, he was president of the European Parliament. But also he has a strong national background, not only now as Spanish foreign minister, but previously um, in earlier governments in the 1990s. So I think he will work well with member states, but also understand the growing importance of the European Parliament and the legitimacy that comes with that. Um, he doesn't suffer fools gladly, and he has a tendency to speak his mind, but I, I think that is also um, you know, a positive aspect of, of, of his personality. So I'm pretty confident that he's going to be a very strong HRVP. And obviously a core part of his role will be uh, building consensus for foreign policy issues. You re recently mentioned that Brexit has brought the EU closer together, made it easier to build consensus mm -hmm. on these key issues. Can you envisage any situation where it will become easier to build consensus on foreign policy issues? Well, I strongly believe that both Trump and Brexit have been external federators, as we som sometimes describe them. In other words, we have all realised um, how much is at stake and uh, how much we actually have in common. Although there is, of course, uh, there are tensions within the EU. It's a very heterogeneous um, organisation now. But um, in spite of that, I think we will be able to forge these uh, agreements, essentially because of the external environment. And I'm thinking mainly of the US-China uh, trade and commercial rivalry, mm -hmm. which is affecting all of us, and also the technological challenges that go with that. Um, I'm not saying that without external threats or challenges we wouldn't be able to forge any kind of consensus, but obviously it is going to help. Um, Perhaps the Russian, Russia's revisionism is also another factor, although obviously threat perceptions vary very considerably. I think basically the, the China-US rivalry is the, will be the 21st century issue that's going to bring us closest together. And finally then, just on Spain's role in this debate, traditionally where does Spain position itself within the European Union? Which countries does it tend to ally with and on which issues? Well, I like uh, silly jokes, and my silly joke about that is... I have to define Spanish-European policy in one sentence, I always say 
everything with Germany, nothing against France. Um, so we have a very close relationship with both of those member states. And, but Spain has a problem, I think, which is that it has traditionally only really thought in terms of Western Europe, and it needs, especially in a post-Brexit uh, Europe, it needs to think about new partners, uh, new partnerships and new leaderships. And, uh, for example, the Netherlands, which is a country that um, Spain doesn't have much in common with, for example, in its attitudes to the Eurozone, is now turning to Spain as a possible ally um, because of its strong position on the single market and, and so on. So I think Spain is beginning to move out of its traditional comfort zone and think of, for example, countries in Central Eastern Europe, the Baltics, as potential allies and partners and not just rely on the traditional Franco-German uh, tandem. Dr. Powell, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Likewise, thank you very much. Thank you.